Um, well, um, many of you would know that I have argued for some time that Chris Bowen, I believe, is the most dangerous politician this country's had since World War II. However, however, days such as this are days for celebration because as a result of what you are protesting about, I believe we will see the end of Bowen and of the Albanese government. Um, the public may not yet understand, though you do, that what they are seeking to do about energy policy in this country is not only unachievable, but utterly destructive. I have called it for many years, way back, when we began all this and everyone wanted to get in love with renewable energy, which is not renewable, it's unreliable. But I argued that this was a national economic suicide note. And it is, and it is, it has, you see, everyone goes on about, everyone goes on about the cost of living, don't they? Now, and they separate that from energy policy, this ridiculous net zero nonsense. Now, energy policy is one of the central components towards the difficulties we're having with cost of living. For example, where we are here today, the microphone, the, there's a piano over there, these things just didn't arrive. They were brought here by trucks and the trucks were powered by energy, fossil fuel energy. Over 80% of our energy is still coming from fossil fuels and it will not change. Renewable energy can't power this nation. Now, what, what we're... What, what, what we're... Uh, yes, you can't eat power lines, you're dead right. What, what we're... You people are very clever. I like the bugger off, that's absolutely right. But, but, this is the point that I want to make before I go any further. The problem apparently with fossil fuels is that they emit, hence the word emissions, they emit carbon dioxide. Now, politicians don't even understand any of this because I've asked any number of them and they can't even answer the question. It's not carbon. They talk about carbon reduction schemes. It's not carbon we're reducing. This is carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide you've got to say this slowly, is 0.04% of the atmosphere. 0.04% of the atmosphere worldwide, all over the world. Now of that, man-made constitutes 3% of 0.04%. Man-made, carbon dioxide, the rest, rest naturally occurs through oceans and everything else, forget that. Man-made is 3%. Little old Australia down here, down under, is 1.3% of 3% of 0.4%. Where do you want to put the decimal point? And here they are now telling us, here they are now telling us this, the mining of coal, the use of coal, the use of fossil fuels is going to create climate change and the climate change will end the world. And as a result, young kids have been brainwashed in classrooms, believe all this sort of stuff, and, and, and the suicide rates are increasing. And teachers are part of all, they march for this nonsense, a march for climate change. Well, I'm telling you, Albo will have his, Albo has his holidays at Kirribilli House, well, what he wants to sit on the lawn, as I said last night, on ADH, I hope you all watch us on ADH, yeah. sit on the lawn out there and have a look at Pinch Gut, have a look at Pinch Gut Island and see that for the last 70 or 80 years, the level of the water coming and going hasn't even changed. We, we, are, we are the victims of yet another gigantic and enormous hoax, but the cost of this, the cost, and I've been saying this for years, the cost of this is dramatic. I want to repeat before I go any further, and I've asked politicians on my program, as a result of their honesty, I won't name them, but they're in government. And I've said, playing dumb, uh, well, what's, the, what, what's the problem here? Is the, I, I just don't get this climate change thing I said. What's the problem? Is, is the problem coal? Is, yeah, fo oh, fo fo fossil fuels. Oh, you're right. Huh? Fossil, what is the problem? Uh, they, no, well, well, is the problem carbon dioxide? Uh, yes, 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 they say. Okay, well, listen, just fix me up, because I don't understand. 
How much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere such that we've got to sort of stop it because it's causing damage? Hang on. Uh, hello, are you still there? Uh, hello, could I, could I just ask that again? What is the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Answer, I don't know. Now here are people, here are people fashioning public policy about a problem that they don't know and can't articulate and yet which is damaging the national economic well-being of this country. And 0.4% of the atmosphere, zero, get this, zero, you've got to tell you, 0.04% of the atmosphere. Worldwide, mankind creates 3%. In Australia, we are a little 1.3% of 3% of 0.04%. And someone's trying to tell us that we're so stupid that we should believe this is going to cause the end of the world. And it is, it is an at, renewable energy, and that's why this is a celebration. Let him go on. He'll do damage along the way. Let him go on with his net zero stuff. Let him go on with his carbon dioxide emission stuff because it will fail and it cannot possibly work. Now, let me tell you, part of this is, part of the, part of the plan, I'll put the old phone in the pocket, part of the plan, you can't believe this stuff, you'd think it was fiction. So in other words, to get to net zero, or what they want, 82% of renewables, 82% of renewables by 2030, hey? It's 2024, 80%, that's his 82%, that's his promise, this dope, this dangerous dope Bowen, 82% by 2030. So how's he gonna get there? Right, well, he wants 22,500 watt solar panels every day. Every day, 22,000, that's his, he's saying this, not me, 22,500 watt solar panels every day between now and 2030. Uh, <laughs> well, hang on. This gentleman down here saying, where are they gonna go? Let me tell you, in productive Queensland, yes. in some of the most productive land in Queensland, they have 9,000 acres stolen from farmers to put in solar panels. 9,000 acres. I mean, who, who, who's, who's going to feed us? Who's going to feed us when your prime agricultural land is absorbed by this nonsense? So that's 22,000 solar panels. Hang on, we're not finished. Because he says, now hang on, then he wants 40, 40 seven megawatt wind turbines, 40 every month, every month. Where do they go? Oh, and, oh by the way, oh, where do we get them all from? China, China, they're laughing at us, China. So China switches off supply whenever they like and gone are the solar panels and gone are the wind turbines. But then you see, you've got to get this electricity allegedly generated, this renewable and unreliable electricity generated, you've got to get it to the grid. So how do you do it? Well, he wants 10,000 kilometres of transmission lines. 10,000 kilometres. Now, under New South Wales law, I have to tell you, because this happened with New Coal, the government can then expropriate land from the farmer for no compensation. For no compensation. They can expropriate the land for no compensation to build these transmission lines. I tell you what, it won't happen because the farmers are too smart and the farmers, the farmers won't cop it. The farmers won't cop any of this stuff. So that, that's Bowen, that's basically what Bowen is saying he will do. Well, it's got no, it's got, you see, everyone goes on about energy policy. I can write, I can write a functional energy policy in one sentence. One sentence. Now you've got to remember this. Tell your kids. The energy has to be firstly available, then it's got to be reliable, and then it has to be affordable. That's it. Renewable energy is none of them. None of them. None of them. Energy policy requires energy to be available, Wind doesn't blow, sun doesn't shine. I mean, parts of Europe, they have five days in a row of wind drought. And that's why that silly Merkel, she's gone, but she closed down coal fire power stations and she closed down nuclear power stations. We're gonna be the renewable energy king of the world. And then they suddenly find they're in all sorts of mess and they're mothballing, getting out of mothballs, coal fired power stations and trying to resurrect nuclear energy. But you see, this is the point, because it's not available. 
It's not reliable and it's not affordable. Now, now, let me just let me just share something with you, which is interesting here. I've done this a thousand times, but why don't I just share this piece with you? I brought it here today, which you'd be interested in. Uh, there's a bloke who's done a hell of a lot of work, and he's in the House of Lords now uh, in London. And I've spoken to him many times. Having said that, now I can't find the bloody thing. Um, and, and he's he's been. Um, um, and he's been on about this and I've spoken to him, it's phenomenal. He's done the research on what this means, this so-called renewable energy rubbish. And see, what Peter Dutton's got to say is, uh, let, he said, uh, he's got to say, I'll let the public decide, but I'm telling you something, we won't be closing down coal-fired power stations. Yeah. We, won't, we won't be stopping, we won't be stopping gas extraction. Now. If you don't like it, don't vote for me. I'll tell you what, they'll fall over themselves. Knowing that this has been the source of our wealth and the source of our renewable, our reliable energy and affordable energy and our national wealth for years and years to come. Because as I said before, the things that are here, the piano that's there, the food that you'll eat tonight didn't just arrive in the supermarket, it was brought in trucks which were powered, powered by fossil fuel energy. So these people, it's a celebration today. What you're talking about will destroy this government and they deserve to be destroyed. Now, just think about this, before I come to this Lord Ridley, just think about this, Net Zero Australia, I did something on this a couple of uh, weeks ago. Net Zero Australia, reckon, Net Zero, net, that, listen to the name, Net Zero. So they're in this gig, they're in this gig. That's why they're called Net Zero Australia. And they've said, Australia will have to find $1.5 trillion by 2030 to meet the net zero targets. Hey, what's that car? 1.5, I'm glad you're smart, $1.5 trillion. That's what Bowen, Bowen, Bowen told an energy conference. To get to Bowen's targets, we'll need $1.5 trillion of investment by 2030 because we've got a problem Carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere and it's 0.04% of the atmosphere. <laughs> and little old Australia is 1.3% of 3% of 0.04%. Now, Charlie, you're a mathematician. Tell me where I put the decimal point. That means we're basically contributing 0, 0, 0, 0 point something to the carbon dioxide so-called problem. So here you are, I've got a dope, a dope, and he's got plenty of supporters, I might add, and a lot of the Liberal wets are in the same boat. Liberal wets are in the same boat. Boot them out. Judas, Judas, boot them out. That bloke in South Australia, Birmingham, he can go. We start with him. There's plenty of them. There's plenty of them. Now, basically, if the coalition want to win government, they've got to start listening to the people who are on the ground who know what the reality is. And there are three big E's, three big E's, capital E's, that they're about. Energy is the first. Energy policy is the first. I mean, then you've got to get education. You do what you like there. Oh, and what about immigration? This mob are going to bring in another 1.2 million people in one year. 650,000 migrants, 650,000 student visas, and you can't drive down the street for congestion. You can't get a doctor in the bush. You can't get teachers in the bush. Where are these people going to go? But that's, another, that's another story. There's a million reasons why the coalition have got to be up front and say, this is what we believe in. This is, and vote for us. If you don't like us, don't vote for us. See, Judith Sloan said, and they hate Judith Sloan, but Judith Sloan wrote, in many ways, Germany is the standout example of disappointment. Failure to meet emission reduction targets, soaring power prices, re this is Germany, reinstating coal-fired power stations, the scuttling of programs such as the compulsory end of gas and coal-fired home heating and delaying the phase-out of internal combustion engine vehicles. In other words, Germany, a failure. They said under Merkel, oh, we will be, we will be the renewable energy. Bowen, <laughs> Bowen went to Japan a couple of months ago because, of course, we get $400 billion a year in exports of coal and gas to Japan because Japan are energy deficient. So what he's going to do, he's gone up to persuade them that we'll be a renewable energy superpower. This is Bowen talking to the uh, Japanese Prime Minister Kushida. We'll be a superpower, and listen, and we'll be able to export to you all the energy you need. What happened? What happened? The Japanese Prime Minister listened and said, thank you, Mr. Bowen. Next day, caught a plane to Saudi Arabia to make sure that his energy supplies would be guaranteed by the Middle East. By the Middle East. Knows, he knew, he knew, he knew, 
He was talking of fake. What about Sweden? Sweden was going to be the big renewable star of Europe, Sweden. And they were going to go nuclear. And they said, right, oh, well, we'll do all that. But first thing, we've got to get coal back on the agenda. This is Europe. And what are we learning from Europe? Absolutely bugger all. Plan B for Bowen. Plan A won't work. What's plan B? Abuse everybody who disagrees with him. That's plan B. Where are you, Mr Bowen? Here, I'll, I'll hand over the microphone to you, Mr Bowen. Come and, come and address these people. He won't talk to them. He won't talk to them because he can't answer the questions. Now, let me, let me see if I can find... I most probably left it behind because Charlie rang me and told me I was late or something. Um, but hang on, bear with me because this is... I just got some statistics which are very important. Here we are. Now, this... Look, this is, mate, look you've got to laugh. You've got to have a sense of humour. This is Lord Ridley, who's done a stack of work. You can Google him, if you like, on this fake and this hoax of renewable energy, Lord Ridley. And he's an author, and he wrote recently, if wind turbines, oh, sorry, he made the point, going back to the years that we can get proof, I'll stay with because this isn't complicated to understand, even though there's a few figures involved, and your eyes tend to glaze over. But in one year, from 2013 to 2014, the International Energy Agency said that world energy demand grew, grew, that's the growth of energy, grew by 2,000 terawatt hours, forget that, but it grew. World energy demand grew, understandably, more population, more manufacturing, uh, better technology, air conditioning, all that sort of stuff, new cars, got the lot, growth. So, Lord Ridley said, if wind turbines were to supply all of that growth, but no more, not the energy needs, just the growth. How many wind turbines, he said, would we need to build each year? He says the answer. The answer is nearly 350,000. He said that's 350,000 just to meet the growth, the growth. Now, he then said 350,000 wind turbines is one and a half times as many as have been built since World War II. Can't be done. But this is what Ridley. So he then said, at a density of very roughly 50 acres per megawatt, typical for wind farms, that many turbines would require a land area greater than the whole of the British Isles, including Ireland, every year. Every year. He said, if we kept this up for 50 years, we would have covered every square mile, this is Lord Ridley, every square mile of land area the size of Russia with wind farms. Every square, this is rubbish this bloke's talking, but he can't be told, can't read of course, illiterate. The bloke can't read, can't do anything. He knows everything, Bowen, stands in. Craig Kelly was here today, and uh, Craig I had on this week in a brilliant interview, there he is Craig, and Craig told me the other night that on coronavirus when Craig was arguing arguing that there are alternatives to vaccinations which are now killing hundreds of thousands of people. When Craig argued in the parliament that there are alternatives, and mentioned ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, this arrogant Bowen stood up pointing his finger at Craig Bowen, at Craig Kelly, and telling Craig Kelly was a fake, and you're a fake and you're a liar, pointing at him. And who's right today? Craig, Craig Kelly. Craig Kelly. He's over here. He's over here. But, but make no mistake, Make no mistake, you pay a high price for being right. It cost him his job. It cost him his seat in the parliament because everyone wanted to demonise Craig Kelly. Demonise Craig Kelly. Now we learn that the bloke, everything he said was correct. Go back to Lord Ridley. Just cop that. British Isles included. He said, if we kept this up for 50 years, we'd have covered every square mile of land area the size of Russia with wind farms. So he goes on. He said, you'd need... He said, they closed down Liddell. Now, now everyone, you see, the argument is, oh, well, these coal-fired power stations don't work, they're old, they're falling apart. Hang on. If you owned a coal-fired power station and you listen to these dopes that are in the parliament who are saying, we're going to get rid of you, you're out, you're going to close you down, we're giving you no more extension to your licence, why would you maintain the coal-fired power station? You would not spend a dollar on maintenance. So, but they then use the argument, oh, these things have got to be maintained, they can't function properly, they can't produce the kind of electricity we need. So, as a result, they closed close them down. Now, Liddell closed down. It's gone in April. This is Ridley. He says, 
you'd need 69 Ningans. Oh, I, let me just see. Ningan. Now he talks about Ningan. And uh, I can't find the bloody page, but it doesn't matter. Look, I'll just give you these figures. 69 Ningans, and this is a massive wind farm up there of thousands of acres up here, would re you'd require 93 million solar panels to replace Liddell. That's why they're saying, oh, we might have to shut down manufacturing if it's hot summer. We'll have to tell these people not to use so much electricity or there'll be blackouts. Well, I hope one day, because of Bowen, that at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, when it's pitch dark, there'll be cars running into one another on George Street because the lights have gone out. Then they might actually learn where the electricity comes from. And they're all mad about electric vehicles. Has anyone done any work on electric vehicles that blow up with those lithium-ion batteries? Electric vehicles, where does the electricity come from? I mean, in one, in one breath they're saying, oh, wind down your air conditioners, but buy your electric, electric vehicle. These people are a massive contradictions. And so what he said was, you'd need 69 wind farms the size of Ningen to replace Liddell, 93 million solar panels, plus the cost, of course, you've got to get the stuff from Ningen to the grid, that stuff. And he said, that would occupy an area to do all of this, just replacing Liddell, of 17,000 hectares which is equivalent to 28 Melbourne CBDs. It can't be done. It cannot be done. But can the bloody opposition... I just want the opposition in the Federal Parliament to keep asking Bowen how Brittany Egan's got $3 million, but they don't seem... Eh? Why, why, why wouldn't we say our money? It's our money. Uh, and she's going to live on the south of France. It's our money. Why would you ask these questions? Why don't you say what is going to happen at Meningen? And is it true? that we need 17,000 hectares. Between 2013 and 14, the International Energy Agency, this is not Alan Jones, said that world energy man, demand grew by 2,000 terawatt hours. Now, Lord Ridley says, if wind turbines were to supply all that growth, I think I've told you this, you'd need 350,000 wind turbines each year. Further, he said, I've made those points. Now, Michael Schellenberger, I won't go on, go on forever here, I've done this a thousand times, but Schellenberger. Now this man, this man was a world renowned environmentalist, anti-nuclear energy, pro-renewable energy for 20 years. And two years ago he wrote, by the way, the bloke, the, this is interesting, the bloke who was the advisor to Barack Obama, the scientific advisor to Barack Obama, argued the fact that renewable energy was virtually used by words of fake and a hoax and that bloke wrote a book and he couldn't get it published in america so you're cancelled for saying this stuff this is the power of the left-wing social media you're cancelled craig kelly is cancelled i'm cancelled for saying this stuff but however we don't worry about them the public understand and we've got to get the message to the public now i was saying something then what was i uh, oh yes the international what's that Oh, she's telling me to wrap it up. Do they want it to be wrapped up? we got things to say. No one wrapping. We didn't come to a bloody march to be wrapped up, did we? Honestly, this is what's wrong with us. This is what's wrong with us. We've come here. We've come here. To, we've come. Oh, forget the timetable, for God's sake. Oh, this is what drives me nuts. You know, we've got a timetable. We've got to keep to the timetable. The timetable won't help us defeat Chris Bowen, I can tell you. you know, and that's what we're about. So the International Energy Agency said we'd need 2,000 terawatt hours. Lord Ridley said, basically, that that is unachievable, unachievable with the resources that exist today. Schellenberger is the man who wrote the book Apocalypse Now. And he said, if we knew then what we know now, Schellenberg said, we would have to apologise, and he did in the book. I apologise to my reading public. I was wrong, and he said, we will never power the world with renewable energy. The extent, he said, the extent to which we have been duped is astonishing. That's what Sheldon, the extent to which we are being duped today. Others are waking up. Europe is waking up. But we're not waking up. No, no, Bowen knows everything. Okay, look, this lady's best for me organised. I've got to wind up, so I'll finish where I began. I'll finish where I began. This is what I want you to take away from today. Carbon dioxide is the problem, according to these lunatics. Uh, wood ducks, I call them. Uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is 
0.04% of the atmosphere. We'll all say it together. 0.04% of the atmosphere. Right, second point. And the world is responsible for only 3%. Say it. The world is only responsible for 3%. Third point, little old Australia is responsible for 1.3%. Little old Australia is responsible for 1.3%. So basically what we are being attacked by is something which is 1.3% of 3% of 0.04%. And they won't admit any of that. And so here we have this program where we're going to have 82% of renewals by 2030 and by net zero by 2050 it can't be done. So today I congratulate you for coming but be hopeful, be optimistic. What you are protesting about will result in the end of the Albanese government. The but, but I think Barnaby was here and I know Barnaby knows this. The, qu the Queen, oh, the great Barnaby Joyce. Hey mate. Mate, you must have paid that photographer fantastic wedding photos. What a, hey, what about them? <laughs> You've never looked so good, mate. <laughs> and watch out for the bride. She oh, stuff. <laughs> but I'm saying, Barnaby knows this, the opposition have got to get away from Labor policy. They're not going to vote for someone who's Labor light. And here we've been for years chasing around, oh yes, yeah, zero emissions, we believe in zero, we believe in climate change. Tony Abbott said it was crap and he was absolutely right. So it's one of the great hoaxes. I did a story on that last night on ADH, you can check it by just going to the App Store and see ADH TV. So listen, good luck, all you farmers, I hope you've had some rain. I hope you've had some rain. Who's from farthest away? Anyone from Queensland? Right? Anyone? Yeah, Queensland. Kilkeaton, I know, right in the middle of the Shire. I know, absolutely, I've come from there. So who's from Western New South Wales? Good on you, good on you. Well, hang in, we don't do anything for regional New South Wales. But look, you're on a, you're on a winner here, you're on a winner. Don't apologise for what you're saying, but you've got to talk to the kids. They're being brainwashed. Talk to the kids. Thank you for listening.